Okay, welcome to the start of unit two. So um, we're going to be talking about, to start with, um, some new vocab. We're going to be, again, needing to pause this video probably pretty often because this first video, like a lot of our first videos for a, for a unit, have a lot of vocabulary because we got to get that vocab so we can then use it. So please, pause is necessary. You need to copy the stuff down so you have it accessible in your notes. So we got some vocab words for today. Parallel lines. Um, hopefully you guys have heard of parallel before. Um, what parallel lines are, they are lines that head in the same direction. They're the same distance apart at each point. So if I'm looking at, as you copy this down, a notebook here, the sides of it are parallel because they're the same distance apart at every single point across this notebook, right? Again, if I hold my arms up like this, like I'm an air traffic controller guy, yeah, they're parallel because they're never going to cross, right? If, if I just kept these lines going forever and ever and ever, because that's what lines do, they are never going to cross. They are the same distance apart from each other at every single point. Now, perpendicular lines are lines that intersect, which means cross. If you wanna put cross instead of intersect, you can. Intersect is just our fancy geometry word. So lines that intersect at a 90 degree angle. So if I'm looking at my notebook here again, this line and this line down here intersect, they touch, they cross at a 90 degree angle. I hope all of you guys could look at this corner and tell me that's a 90 degree angle. It's a right angle, right? So perpendicular means right angle means 90 degrees. Yes, they specific, they have to cross or touch specifically at a right angle. They have to create a corner of a room. Now skew lines, you may have already heard about parallel and perpendicular before in earlier math classes, um, in elementary school possibly, but skew lines may be new. So skew, skew means kind of like messy. Like if I were to say my room is a skew because it is right now, my classroom is a mess. That's actually what a skew means. It means it's just all over the place. So skew lines kind of are like that. They're all over the place. They are lines that do not cross, but they're also not parallel. So what you wanna imagine this is as we have planes flying over us all the time, right? I could have planes going this way and one coming this way. And they could be at the exact same, they could be right above the same city at the same time, but not crash. How? Well, that's because one can be up here and one can be down here. So they could go shoo, and they're not crossing, but we wouldn't call this parallel, right? They're not headed in the same direction. They're not the same distance apart at each point. So again, skew lines are lines that they don't touch like car, car crash or plane crash, but they're also not parallel. So think about it like that. If they are going different directions, but they don't touch, that's skew. So let's look at a picture and see if we can um, understand this now. So we have a cube here. We're gonna have parallel lines, perpendicular lines, because it's a cube, so we have right angles, right? And skew lines. So I'm gonna do a, the first few with you, and then I'm gonna have you try the next two. So it says A, F, and B, C are what? Are they parallel, skew, or perpendicular? Let's see. So first, you need to kind of follow along with your finger. Here's A, F. And here's BC. So they're both like this. What do we think? Is that the definition of parallel, skew, or perpendicular? Those two are going to be parallel because they do not cross. And more importantly, they are both headed the same direction. They both go this way. Okay, I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna minimize this so I can access my eraser a little bit easier here. Let's look at the next ones. I want G, E, and E, D. So follow with your finger, G, E, and E, D. 
What do we think about those ones? Parallel, skew, or perpendicular? Well, they can't be parallel because one's going this way and one's going this way. That's not parallel. But they can't be skew either because they do touch. They actually share point E, right? So, boom, this right here, that's a right angle. That's a 90 degree angle. So this is perpendicular. I'm just going to write perp or perpendicular. Those two are perpendicular because they cross at a 90 degree angle. And again, it specifically has to be a 90 degree angle. I'm going to try one more and then you're going to try the last two. So BC and EF, follow with your finger. Find BC, find EF. Here's BC and here's EF. So they're not touching. So they can't be perpendicular, right? Perpendiculars, boom, they have to touch. And these aren't. But looking at this, they also aren't perpendicular, or sorry, parallel. One is going this way and one's coming back overhead. This is the definition of skew. If these were the paths two airplanes were taking, headed to different cities, they're not going to crash because one's down low, one's coming up high. These are skew, not parallel. So go ahead and try the next two. Again, the key is to follow with your finger on the picture, like on your screen, and determine parallel, headed in the same direction, perpendicular, they have to come in touch, or skew. Go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, let's check and see. So we have AG and CD. AG and CD. Now, if we notice something about these, they are on the same kind of angle of the box, right? Even though one is up and one is down, they are headed the same direction. So these would be considered parallel. If you said skew, I can see why, because one's kind of up and one's kind of down. But these are headed the same direction. They're both coming this way, yeah? So that is parallel. And let's look at the last one, CD and AF. So CD and AF. So now these ones, CD is coming back this way and AF is going that way. These ones now are skew. They're not crossing, so they can't be perpendicular. They don't touch, but they're also not headed the same direction. Okay, so you can please copy this picture down, and we're going to copy in a, one more new vocab word. We're going to have a lot of vocab here. Um, this new vocab word is called a transversal. Trans means like passing through, right? Like transatlantic means crossing over the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. So a transversal, please copy this, is a line that cuts through two or more lines. So if we're looking at this picture, here's A and B, is, this is line A and line B, that we could call them, and then we have line C. So which is the line that cuts through, which, which is the transversal? Which is the line that cuts through the other two? Go ahead and try it. So hopefully you realize this line should be line C. That's because C, cuts through these other two lines. So we would call C the transversal. It's cutting through those other two lines. Okay, we got a lot to copy here again as well. Go ahead and copy this picture. Um, we're gonna have a lot of new vocab. So to understand this vocab, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that this transversal line is a bridge crossing a river created by these two horizontal lines. So just imagine, it. we've got this river here, right? This is the river, all in here, and this is a bridge. So let's go, I'm gonna go ahead and use color here. Typically when I do this in class, um, I actually bring out colored pencils and we do this together. If you happen to have colored pencils at home, you can do it on your paper, it really does help. Otherwise, you're just going to kind of have to picture it or you can like shade it in different shades of gray or whatever. <laughs> you can do that, too. So let's go ahead. I'm going to use the color that I have on my um, 
smart notebook. So what we're going to do is we're going to shade the river blue. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. Again, if you happen to have crayons or colored pencils, you can use that. This is the river. I'm shading it blue. Right, all this area is my river. So we call this the interior because it's inside the river, right? This is the, in, this blue section, anything in there, we say it's interior, it's inside the river. I will say it again, please pause the video as necessary. Okay, now we're gonna shade outside the river. So we're gonna call this like the banks of the river, right? That's what comes up. I know we live in Phoenix and we don't have a lot of rivers here, but you call the banks, which is the land coming up to the river, we're gonna shade that green. So again, if you don't have colors, you can kind of just be following along. You can shade it in different darknesses with your pencil, that's fine. So all of this out here, these are the banks of the river. Now, since you are outside the river at those points, we call this the exterior. Very, again, important things to copy down. You want to be following along and copying the stuff down. I know it's a lot. So outside the river is the exterior of it. Inside the river, that's the interior. Now, say I was a little person and I'm walking up to this river and there's somebody on the other side of the river, right? So I'm over here and somebody else is over here. If we are standing on the same side of the bridge, to the left or the right of it, so say, I'm gonna go ahead and make some circles here. Say that I am standing on this side, which is the left of the bridge, and this guy is also standing to the left of the bridge, right? We're both on the same side of the bridge. We call these positions consecutive. Consecutive means one right after the other, like consecutive numbers, one, two, three, four, five, those are consecutive, as opposed to like two, four, six, eight. Those are not consecutive because they're not one right after the other. So same side of the bridge, either to the left, or if we switched and we were both on the right side, that's consecutive, same side. Now, if people are standing on different sides of the bridge, one on the left and one on the right, so let's say that this guy was standing over here and I'm over here. We are now standing on different sides of the river. And again, I could also be in the river. So I could be here and he could be here. We could be inside the river, but we are on different sides of the bridge. He's on the left side of the bridge. I'm on the right side of the bridge or vice versa. We call this alternate. Alternate means every other, right? If I'm alternating, yeah, that means going back and forth, every other. So different sides of the bridge. So this is again alternate. This is consecutive. Same side, different sides. Now, lastly, we do have one more thing we can say about this picture. Say me and the guy across the river, we're standing in the same corner. So notice this little X right here. I am in the top left corner, right? Of this X, I have the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. If he is also, if we look at this cross, if he is also standing in the top left corner, I'm, he's in the top left corner, I'm in the top left corner, we call this corresponding. That's because we're in the same position. When things correspond to each other, they kind of go together, right? So corresponding would be in the same corner. So if I moved here, notice in the, in the X, if I draw a little circle here, this is the bottom right corner of the X. For him to be corresponding, he would need to be in the bottom right corner of the X. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put these words together because when we have these lines crossing through with a, with a transversal, we can talk about a bunch of different positions. Again, like there's a river and a bank, yeah, and a bridge. 
Um, because later we're going to learn, and I'm going to talk about it in class after you finish the said puzzle, that these positions have special relationships. So let's go ahead and look at this picture now. Please go ahead and copy this picture down. We're going to go through and we're going to label all the different positions of angles. So we have the interior and the exterior. Here's my bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of real quickly, this is the inside of my river. This is the outside of my river, right? That's what we have. So think about it like a bridge and a river. Where is the inside of the river? Where is the outside of the river? So let's go ahead and go through this. So we're, what we're going to say here is any angles that are inside my river. I want you to take a moment and see if you know. There's four angles that are inside my river. Go ahead and write it down. Okay, let's check. So if this is inside my river, hey, those are my angles. You should have said angle two, angle seven, angle three, and angle six. Those are all inside my river. Now we have the exterior. So here's my exterior. Here's the banks of my river. This is a bank of my river. This is a bank of my river. They are the exteriors, right? So I just highlighted them. You can write them down real quick. But those are my angles that are outside my river, exterior. Angle one, angle eight, angle four, and angle five. Whoops, sorry. Okay, now we talked about before which of these lines is the transversal, and it has a little letter by it so we can tell the transversal is the bridge. So we would call the transversal, it's right there, line, this is an L. They typically draw it cursive because they don't want you to think it's a one, yeah? So usually if we have L's, we draw them cursive, and it's just like a little like bloop, if you don't know how to draw a cursive out. That is the bridge. The transversal is the bridge. So what we're going to do from here now, we're going to put together these um, positions we just talked about. Interior, exterior, alternate, consecutive. We can put them together in different ways to talk about two angles um, and the relationship between them. So corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are any angles in the same position. That's what we talked about on the last slide. Corresponding, they are in the same corner. So I'm going to give you one, and then well, I'll talk about the corresponding angle to that. We'll kind of go back and forth. So hopefully you are getting an understanding of what corresponding means. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's start with angle one. So angle one and another angle, it's a plus sign for and, and another angle are corresponding. Corresponding, again, have to be from different, we're talking about one angle from one side of the river, one angle from the other side of the river. So notice angle one is in the top left corner on that side of the river. I want you to look here and see which angle is in the top left corner. Go ahead and answer it. So the angle in the top left corner is three. Those are corresponding because they're in the same position. But there's other corresponding angles. I have four pairs of corresponding angles I could do. So let's look at now, let's say angle eight. So angle eight, notice the corner it's in. It is in the top right corner. Look down here, what angle is in the top right corner of just that X? Only focus on the circle. What angle is in the top right corner? And you should have said angle six is in the top right corner. Again, notice they are in the same position within each of those circles. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it two more times because we got two more. So we did one and eight, let's do two and angle seven. 
What is corresponding with both of those? So hopefully you're catching on to this. Two is in the bottom uh, left corner. It corresponds with angle four. Seven is in the bottom right corner. It corresponds with angle five. So again, when you're doing corresponding angles, it helps sometimes to circle the crosses, right? Where the angles go, where the lines go and go, okay, top corner, top corner, align it from there, right? There's all of my corresponding angles in these pictures. Okay, now we have alternate interior angles. So alternate means different sides of the bridge, right? So here's my bridge. I need angles that are on different sides of the bridge. However, not only do they need to be on different sides of the bridge, they also need to be inside the river. So those two things have to be true. Different sides of the bridge, but they have to be inside the river. So I'm gonna give you one example and you're gonna give me the other one. There's two pairs of angles here that are alternate interior. So interior needs to be inside the river. So I have to choose from these angles because these are my interior angles inside the river. Now they need to be alternate. So they need to be on opposite sides of the bridge. So if I choose angle two to start with, angle two is an interior angle. What would be the alternate interior one to it? It still has to be inside the river, just on the other side of the bridge. Well, that would have to be angle six. Both of these angles are inside the river, but on different sides of the bridge. Go ahead and say what are the other two angles that are inside the river, but on different sides of the bridge. Go ahead and write it down. Okay, you should have said if two and six are alternate interior angles, seven and three are also alternate interior angles inside the river just on different sides of the bridge okay alternate exterior so now exterior i'm looking outside the river here's the banks of my river i'm only talking about these angles so alternate though once again they need to be on different sides of the bridge. So alternate exterior, outside the river, but on different sides of the bridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose angle um, one to talk about to start with. So angle one is an exterior angle because it's outside the river. I need the exterior angle over here that is on the other side of the bridge. That's going to be angle five. Both of those angles are outside the river, exterior, but on different sides of the bridge. So angle one and angle five are alternate exterior angles. Go ahead and look at the picture and write down the other two angles that are also alternate on opposite sides of the bridge but both outside the river. Your answer should have been angle eight and angle four. Those are both outside the river, but on different sides of the bridge. Okay, consecutive interior now, we're gonna keep it going. So consecutive interior, Consecutive, we said, means same side of the bridge. So like these two right here, these are on the right side of the bridge. So we would call them, they'd be consecutive. Well, those are corresponding, but whatever. Now, again, not only do we need them to be the same side of the bridge, we need them to be inside the river. We need them to be interior. So I have to be looking at these angles. I need two angles inside the river that are on the same side of the bridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick angle two to start with because that is an interior angle. 
and which is the angle that is inside the river, but also on the same side of the bridge. That happens to be angle three. They are both inside the river, also on the same side of the bridge. Go ahead and write the other two angles that are inside the river, but on the same side of the bridge. Okay, those happen to be angle seven and angle six, both inside the river, but on the same side of the bridge. So hopefully you're catching on to how, this, how we think about this. We got one more to do and then we're done. So lastly, we have consecutive exterior angles. So we pause and we think, what does this mean? Consecutive, same side of the bridge. Exterior, outside the river. So I have to look outside the river is out here. So I can only be talking about these angles. I need two that are on the same side and then Again, the other two that are also on the same side. So if I choose angle one, because I can do that, angle one is an exterior angle. What is also an exterior angle on the other side that's on the same side of the bridge? Angle one and angle four are on the same side of the bridge, but also outside the river. That's consecutive exterior. Go ahead and write down what is the other pair of consecutive exterior angles. Okay, you should have gotten eight and five are both exterior outside the river, but they are on the same side of the bridge. So I know this was a lot today, guys. I know it was a lot of copying. But hopefully we're going to practice it in class. It'll make a bit more sense um, once we're able to continue to practice it.